This video is for mobilization of glenohumeral joint. The concave glenoid fossa receives the convex humeral head. Resting position, the shoulder is abducted 55 degrees, horizontally adducted 30 degrees, and rotated so the forearm is in the horizontal plane with respect to the body. Stabilization, fixate the scapula with a belt or have an assistant help. The mobilization grades for glenohumeral joint 1, 2, 3, and 4 have the same positions. Glenohumeral caudal glide in resting position. Indications to increase abduction. Patient position, supine with arm in resting position. Therapist position and hand placement. Stand lateral to the patient's arm being treated and support the forearm between your trunk and elbow. Place one hand in the patient's axilla to provide a grade 1 distraction. The web space of your other hand is placed just distal to the acromion process. With the superiorly placed hand, glide the humerus in an inferior direction and apply the glide. Glenohumeral caudal glide in progression. Indication to increase abduction. Patient position, supine or sitting with the arm abducted to the end of its available range. External rotation of the humerus should be added to the end range position as the arm approaches and goes beyond 90 degrees. Therapist position and hand placement. With the patient supine, stand facing the patient's feet and stabilize the patient's arm against your trunk with the hand farthest from the patient. Slight lateral motion of your trunk provides grade 1 distraction via a long axis traction. Place the web space of your other hand just distal to the acromion process on the proximal humerus. Mobilizing force with the hand on the proximal humerus, glide the humerus in an inferior direction with respect to the glenoid fossa of the scapula. Glenohumeral elevation progression indication to increase elevation beyond 90 degrees of abduction. Patient position, supine or sitting, with the arm abducted and externally rotated to the end of its available range. Therapist position and hand placement. Hand placement is the same as for the caudal glide progression. Adjust your body position so that the hand applying the mobilizing force is aligned with the treatment plane in the glenoid fossa. With the hand grasping the elbow, apply a grade 1 distraction force, mobilizing force. With the hand on the proximal humerus, glide the humerus in a progressively anterior direction against the inferior folds of the capsule in the axis. Glenohumeral posterior glide in resting position. Indications to increase flexion and to increase internal rotation. Patient position, supine, with the arm in resting position. Therapist position and hand placement. Stand with your back to the patient between the patient's trunk and arm. Support the arm against your trunk, grasping the distal humerus with your lateral hand. This position provides grade 1 distraction to the joint. Place the lateral border of your top hand just distal to the anterior margin of the joint, with your fingers pointing superiorly. This hand gives the mobilizing force. Mobilizing force, glide the humerus posteriorly by pushing down on the elbow through the long axis of the humerus.
glenohumeral posterior glide progression. Indication to increase posterior gliding when flexion approaches 90 degrees and to increase horizontal adduction. Patient position, supine with the arm flexed to 90 degrees and internally rotated with the elbow flexed. The arm may also be placed in a horizontal adduction. Hand placement. Place padding under the scapula for stabilization. Place one hand across the proximal surface of the humerus to apply grade 1 distraction. Place your other hand over the patient's elbow. Mobilizing force. Glide the humerus posteriorly by pushing down on the elbow through the long axis of the humerus. Glenohumeral anterior glide resting position. Indications to increase extension and to increase external rotation. Patient position prone with the arm in resting position over the edge of the treatment table, supported on your thigh. Stabilize the acromion with padding. The supine position may also be used. Therapist position and hand placement. Stand facing the top of the table with the leg closer to the table in a forward stride position. Support the patient's arm against your thigh with your outside hand. The arm positioned on your thigh provides a grade 1 distraction. Place the ulnar bottom of your other hand just distal to the posterior angle of the acromion process. With your fingers pointing superiorly, this hand gives the mobilizing force. Mobilizing force, glide the humeral head in an anterior and slightly medial direction. Bend both knees so that the entire arm moves anteriorly.